Hey, hey, welcome back to the Joyful Life with KJ podcast with co host Bonnie Clapp. <laughs> An extra special guest today, Cindy Wetzel, back for Yay, round two. Cindy Wetzel. She's wearing a different shirt than the last podcast today, by notice. Bonnie and I are not. It's been a week. I tried to make it look like it's been five minutes. It's been five minutes. Cindy Ray had changed her clothes so nobody would know it was the same <laughs> event. But here we are, still drinking the same cup of coffee. <laughs> Kill Joyce. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Good to have you back, Cindy. We're happy to have you here. We're going to talk about a tough topic today. My favorite topics are difficult topics. They're my favorite. You know why? Bonnie gets seriously fired up with the hard topics. She just she just goes hard and it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> the face. If you are not watching this podcast on YouTube and you're just listening to it, you're thinking, why the awkward silence? It's because Bonnie's over there making stink face, <laughs> rolling her eyes and her pretty red lipstick. She looks like a 50s mama today. She looks so beautiful. So cute. Thanks. It's not going to make me any more willing to talk. Oh, my word. So let's talk about it. Body image. Body image is one of the most difficult things, I think, to deal with on a daily basis for a woman. And I say in 2023, but I don't think it's any different now than it's ever been. And I know that because it's addressed in the Bible repeatedly. It talks about how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And there are verses that allude to the fact that people must struggle with that thought of I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And outside of Jesus, we're not enough. But when it comes to our body image, it's something that most of us struggle with on a daily basis. For me, it has been one of the biggest changes in my journey. I used to every day look in the mirror and say, you're so gross. You're so gross. Who would ever want to hang out with you? Who would, how did you how did you let yourself get like this? How did you get to look like I hated my hair? I hated my skin. I hated my boobs. I hated my butt. I hated my legs. I hated every single part of my body. And I made sure that I heard it every single day. I made sure that the words that were going on in here came out at myself as what? I don't know. A form of punishment, maybe a form, a way of shaming myself into change. I don't know. I, Ultimately, the devil saw that as a strong, as a weak point for me, and he picked at it like a little dry scab after you fall off your bike, right? He picked it and picked it and picked it. I'm gross and out body right now. <laughs> We're going to talk about something disgusting every podcast. This week, it's picking scabs. <clears throat> <laughs> that is something I have struggled with my whole life, and... I watch, and, and I think it's all women. Ultimately, it's very few women that don't struggle with body image, right? That don't have an idea of, in their head of what is right. What is the right look? What is the right shape? What is the right size? What is the right weight? And I watch it in my daughter and other young daughters that I know who struggle with body image. Who, for myself, I can say that while I negative talked about myself a lot, I was very, or I should say tried to be very diligent to not do that in front of my daughter. I was aware enough of the damage that that could cause to my kid. And I was very, I put a lot of effort into avoiding that talk around my daughter into, even when I wasn't making healthy choices, I wasn't talking about that they were unhealthy. I was, you know... Not say the way I did it was right by any means. But even so, despite all my best efforts, my daughter still looks in the mirror and says, does this make me look skinny enough? Does this make my boobs look too big? Does this make my butt look too big? Does this look right? Does that look right? At 15 years old, homeschooled, not even in the middle of 
modern society all the you know she's not out there living amongst other teenagers who are ridiculing like many of us have gone through she has still learned that her body image is not enough the way it is it's not right it's got to be fixed it's a project to be worked on it's a project to change and mold and where does that come from bonnie why where where does that come from where did it come from for you well, I don't know. I'm asking you. The devil is a liar. And he mm -hmm. finds our vulnerabilities at any age. And children are young and impressionable. And when he can get in there and say, look and compare yourself to that person. And look at all of your shortcomings. And then it becomes a mantra in your head. Just like you just talked about. Yep. That's why it's so important that we put on our armor of the Lord every day. And that we choose Philippians 4, 8. And we think on what is true. I always have to ask myself, what is true? Is it true that I'm unworthy because I'm overweight? Absolutely not. What is true? I am a child of the king and he loves me no matter what my waist size is. So I can love myself. I love and I'm done now. All right. Y'all have fun. And Bonnie's out. So it's just me and you, Cindy. <laughs> Has body image been a struggle for you in your, in your childhood, your young adulthood, your, your current age, your whatever? Has it been a adulthood? That's the word I was looking for. Has it been a struggle for you along the way too? Yeah, but it was deeper. It was uh, self-worth. I had no, no self-worth. I, and I never remember not feeling less than everybody. Um, and people, most people didn't know it. My good friends knew it. Um, and they would try to build me up, but it wasn't something where I needed you to say, oh no, you're nice, you're pretty, you're, it wasn't that. It was like to the core of my being, I felt less than everyone. And I didn't like myself. I didn't see a value in myself. And um, I read all the Bible verses and went to church and, you know, had parents who loved me and I, I, I try to figure it out. I was never body shamed for weight. I got teased by strangers and friends and neighbors alike about red hair and freckles, which sounds very silly. Sounds, but that was my, you know, I couldn't hide it and I couldn't, you know, I didn't know later that people thought it was pretty. I thought they were still making fun of me because that's how it always had been. So, um, but it molds you and in, in, into who you are. It made me always notice the person who was being picked on. You know, I got bullied a lot in school. Who cut your bangs? You know, because my mom would hold them down and cut them until they get up to here. Oh yeah, I think we've all had those bangs. Yeah. So the ninth grader is waiting for the me, the seventh grader, to come and pick on me. And years later, I thought she had red hair too. I bet she got picked on, and so she was just, you know passing on the favor, but, um, yeah, I just always, uh, just like I had to apologize for being in a room, you know, and just couldn't figure out how God could ever use me because I couldn't, I wasn't a good singer or teacher or, you know, all the things you think at church you should be able to do. And then at 47, I just, I, uh, talked to a therapist and she was asking me like why would you let something that someone said in middle school affect you at 47 <laughs> I, was like, hmm, I don't know and then at the same time I read um, Purpose Driven Life and it just there were a couple lines in there that talked about you know you're no accident God made you the way you are because he wanted you that way and that was like And when I realized what my gifts were, like organiz organization and administration and things like that, I was like a bird let out of the cage. I was so happy to be able to do what I was good at for him and realizing he made me that way um, was so freeing. And I think the people who were the happiest about it were my sister, who's really my very best friend, and then my friend Julie, who's in my 
quote unquote best friend for 40 some years because they knew the depth of the unworthiness I felt. You know, I remember standing in Julie's kitchen and she was like, Cindy, if God could forgive Paul and use Paul the way he did, he can, he can use you. I'm like, that got me, but it still didn't, you know. So the feeling now of, of liking myself almost feels the opposite, like I'm not stuck on myself, but what's the vain. word? Vain. Vain, because I like me, and I never did before. If I told you how many times I looked in the mirror, and you probably can identify with this, in, in a public bathroom, looked in the mirror, especially if anybody else was in there, was like, never, never, never would I look in the mirror in a public bathroom. And I started looking once in a while now. It's like, you know, because you look to see if your hair is whatever, but I just would never look because I couldn't handle it. So thanks for bringing it. Who, who thought of it? <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. I was right? the one that said, I don't want to talk about this, but she said, oh, <laughs> let's talk about that. I like to talk about the hard stuff. I mean, ultimately, we know that that self-hatred or self-loathing or self, you know, in a, that feeling of inadequacy. We know that that doesn't come from God. We know it comes from the devil. We know that, that. but it's not like the devil's walking in with a pitchfork saying, you ugly. He's not doing that. It comes from other sources. And those sources to me are things that he uses like media, for example. Media has always been a big one for me. It started right in Seventeen Magazine when I was a kid and I would read that magazine and I'd look at the, for me, I'd look at the uh, the boys that were in there, you know, the movie star boys. You know what I mean? You know, like they always had the signed pictures and you'd hang them on your walls. And I remember looking at those thinking, I'll never be good enough to find somebody who loves me. I'll never meet up to the standard that is set here. Like I, you would look, I would look at those books, the girls and how they were shaped, the girls and what they would wear. And I would think I will never, ever, ever live up to that. Part of that started when um, I had a, uh, one of my grandmothers said to me, you'll never get married if you don't lose some weight. Nobody's going to love you if you're that fat. That played a big role, let me tell you, in my young adulthood, in my self-esteem. And there's a big difference between, between being proud and loving yourself and loving who God created you to be. And I love, Cindy, that you read that in a book that God created you. He, you are the way you are because God chose those attributes. He chose you to be meek. He chose you. That didn't mean he wanted you to hate yourself, but he chose that that meekness and that tenderness that is Cindy Wetzel that we all love so much. He chose that snark of Bonnie Clab that we all love so much. He chose Bonnie to be exactly the way Bonnie is. And that doesn't mean that we don't pursue our health. It doesn't mean that we don't treat our body like the temple that it is. It doesn't, I, I never want it to be confused with the, the big push that's in today's culture for um, loving yourself how you are, no matter what shape, and it, in a way that promotes unhealthy behaviors. There's a lot of promotion well, of that. I think, I think we need to preach the gospel to ourselves in that situation, especially with the way that it is now. Oh, I can just be whoever I am right now. No problem. And I have nothing that needs to be changed. Well, yes, the Lord absolutely adores us and loves us very much. But when he finds us and we find salvation in him, he loves us enough not to leave us the way that we are. And we need to love the temple that we live in enough not to leave it the way that it is, but to do our due diligence to take care of it the best way possible. And yes, there is the, see, you got me, you got me going. Yes, there, there is the internal of you have to learn how to love the spirit being that resides in your flesh. Absolutely. And accept that you are your heart and your mind before you are your, your waist size. 
But at the same time, you cannot just go, this is my waist size and my pre-diabetes and I'm going to flaunt it. Uh, no. Okay. Well, this is, but what can you do in this moment and in this day to take the best care of the soul that lives within your body? You can have that momentary happy of, oh, those chips taste really good. Or you can have the diligence of, I'm going to eat the cucumbers with the nooch and the hot sauce instead, which are delicious, by the way, <laughs> because I know that this is the body that the Lord has given me and I want to treat it with that most care because I love the soul that's within it enough and value who I am as a person enough to treat my outer shell in a loving way as well. And you got me going. I'm sorry. Well, I love it when you get going. My bad. But when you said for you, it started with Seventeen Magazine. For I think for all of us, the thing that stands out to me is that what was the first thing that happened after Adam and Eve's eyes were opened to the knowledge of good and evil and when the fall had happened? What was the first thing they noticed? Their nakedness. And they were what? Super excited about it? No. What came immediately Shame. after? Shame. What have we been battling ever since? Yeah. In regards to what? Yeah. Our body. What's one of the biggest ways that Satan works in people's lives in humanity? All these people who are, are, who are going through, I don't like my body. My body's the wrong body. I don't like my body type. I don't like my body shape. I don't like the color of my hair. I don't like the way that I feel in a room because of who I am. I'm outward being. So much of that is focused on let's distract these children of God with what people can see with their eyeballs. No, we do not celebrate obesity. No, we do not just go, this is me. Just accept it. No, I, I totally understand where you're coming from with that current movement of, okay, well, it's there and we're just going to flaunt it. We should not be voicing negative, terrible things towards other people because of the way they look on the outside. I fully agree that we should be kind people, but we also should be kind enough to ourselves to take care of ourselves physically, but address what's in that heart. Because just like Cindy said, and the only thing that I've ever known Cindy Wetzel is this side of what God has done in her healing in her life. She's an amazing human being gorgeous because her heart shines through and I can see the love of God and I can see that meekness and that deadpan humor and that gentleness and that caring and that reaching out to other people. That's who Cindy Wetzel is. Yeah. I don't care what color the hair is on Cindy's head. And Cindy should be able to walk out of that stall and look confident in that, confidently in that mirror in any public bathroom and say, I am a beloved child of God. And it doesn't matter if my hair is sticking up the wrong way today. It doesn't matter because I'm a beloved child of God. Because that's all I see when I look at you, Cindy Wetzel, is your heart radiating forward. Now, is that all I see with myself? No. And that's where the inner demons are. And that's why we go to bat for ourselves every day. And that's why as Christians, we stay in the word and we say, I'm thinking on what is true. What is true is that I need to take care of my temple I need to be healthy. I need to make wise choices. Absolutely. I do that because I care. But at the heart of it, I'm not unworthy before the Lord because he loves the inner me. And that is what we have to be focusing on. And it's like you said before, you have to have the want to, to make the change. Or else it's just going to be a whole bunch of I'm just going to tell myself and I wish and I'll never get to marry Chad Allen from Tiger Beat that's on my wall. <laughs> it was Michael Jackson that I was in love with. You can have him. I was in love with Fred Savage from the Wonder Years. You know? <laughs> oh, he was the cutest thing. And then it was Jerry O'Connell later on. Oh, I loved Jerry O'Connell. The cutest. Yeah. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? I need to go find a magazine. <laughs> I love the verse, Proverbs 31, 30. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That says it all right there. It's about the heart. It's about fearing the Lord. It's about 
honoring God with our temple. I can, I still have days. Don't get me wrong. I haven't figured it all out. I ain't got it all right. I am on the right path to healing. But nine times out of 10, when I walk by a mirror now, I'm like, yes, girl, get it. <laughs> That's my response. Nine times out of 10, I'm like, mm hmm. That's your homework today, Sid. You got to go to the bathroom and vocally out loud yes. tell yourself, yes, girl, get, get it. it. <laughs> and wait till Mac is around and see what happens. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you from experience, when you, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. People, People are drawn to confidence. Mm -hmm. They are drawn to that because everybody wants to feel good about themselves. People don't want to be stuck in the mire of hatred, self-hatred. People want to feel good. People want to be that girl that is fine with who she is, that's happy in her day today, that the last thing she's worried about in her day is the shape of her butt. She wants to be that girl. Uh, and I can say that from experience, that the difference in relationships around me with my husband, my family, my friends, there's a big difference in my relationship between now and when I was, I hate myself all the time because I was moody and miserable all the time. That came across my, I've always been somebody that used humor to cope. And now I use humor because I just like humor. I like fun. I, it's just how I am. But I use that humor. I mean, I made fun of myself all the time. All the time. My running joke was when I was eating something terrible was that someday I was going to be on my deathbed next to a vegan. Glad that I ate this cheeseburger. Like that was what I used to say all the time. The vegan may be there, but they're going to be sad that they weren't eating the cheeseburger. I used it as a, a cover to, you know, not that I'm saying you should go be vegan, but I used it, I used it as a way to cover up how I truly felt about myself. Really, I was eating that food knowing the impact it had on myself, on me, you know. And then there's times where I think back, I was thinking this morning, I was looking through past pictures because I was looking for an old picture of myself and I was scrolling and I came across pictures from the beginning of 2020 during lockdown. And I had picture after picture after picture after picture of cookies and cinnamon buns and homemade bread and all these different decadent treats that I made during lockdown because there was nothing to do but cook. So that's what I did. And I cooked and ate all of it. And I had all these pictures. I, I had one picture of me dipping Lay's potato chips and cottage cheese and ketchup because that used to be my favorite snack. Okay, I know it's weird. I know. But even to this day, my mouth just watered a little because it sounds so good. I like chips dipped in cottage <laughs> cheese and ketchup. <Funny>. So <laughs> Funny, she's going to die right now. <laughs> Have you I'm tried out. it? I'm dead. I'm Have you out. tried it? It's so good. So anyway. No, I haven't tried it. I won't. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I was scrolling through seeing all these pictures and instead of just seeing food, I was think I was looking at that thinking, I wonder, like I knew back then it was only three, what year is it? 2023. It was only three years ago that I was eating those things. And like Marin would make giant cookies and I'd eat five and then one every time I'd go back into the kitchen. Like I wasn't just eating half a cookie and moving on with my day. I was eating and sneaking cookies, like sneak one and walk away to the bedroom and eat it and then come back out and be like, oh, cookies. So I could have another one. When I, I, I looked at those cookies and I thought, what was going through my head that I thought that was healthy, thought it was, I knew it wasn't healthy, but what was going through my head at the time that I was eating that thinking that that wasn't going to impact me as negatively as it did? Because Truly, I wasn't thinking, okay, this is going to cause me diabetes. This is going to cause me severe obesity. This is going to raise my blood pressure. This is going to raise my cholesterol. This is going to make me very sick. All I was thinking at the time was I, I, can't, I, I was eating the cookies because 
it was something to do and it covered up thinking about anything else. It covered up thinking about the fact that I needed to lose weight, that I was miserable and unhealthy because I was too distracted by the cookie. I was forcefully pushing those feelings down so I could enjoy the cookie and just, you know, push it away. I knew darn well what that cookie was doing to me, but I never allowed those thoughts to the top. The difference between me now and then is I, when those thoughts come into my head, those negative thoughts, I am very proactive. The minute a negative, a negative thought is going to come in. We're human. That's all there is to it. Negative thoughts are going to come in. We can't stop them, but we can stop them in their tracks when they come and we can replace them with, like you said, Bonnie, a truth. I can grab hold of that. Even when I'm choosing to eat unhealthy food and telling myself it's just one meal, it's just one bite, it's just one snack, it's just this, it's just that. Even those thoughts, I can take hold of them and say no and replace it with the truth that this is damaging to my body. This is unhealthy. This is not treating my temple like a temple. This is going in and dumping garbage all over the floor of my temple, not sweeping and scrubbing the floor. That's doing the exact opposite of the way I want my temple to look for the Holy Spirit. I don't want my temple to look like a, a you know, beat up a hotel room that somebody trashed. I want it to look like a palace for my king. So I need to treat it like such. So bringing those thoughts, when those thoughts come in, I have to be very intentional. That's the word I'm looking for. Intentional about replacing that thought and replacing it with a thought that leads towards health for me. A thought that when I look in the mirror and I say, you're still fat. though That's a thought that comes into my head every now and then when I stand in front of the mirror, instead of being like, get it, I'm saying, you're still fat. A lot of times it happens when I go to the gym and I'm standing next to girls that I am different than. You're still fat is the thought that comes in. I I will grab hold of that. Let me just tell you, with these muscles, I will grab hold of that thought and fling it as far away from me as I can intentionally because I know that you're still fat is not a thought that nourishes. It's not a thought that it doesn't serve me. All it does is tear me down and bring on pain and misery. I get rid of it. I have the power to do that. I'm in control. When those thoughts come in, I am in control of being able to change those thoughts. I don't have to let them live around and dump trash on my floor. I don't have to let them be here. They don't belong. So how do you, when they when those thoughts come in, Bonnie, what you say you replace it with truth. So what do you replace it with? What are some examples of things that you might have to grab hold of and replace with the truth. Well, I have to tell myself in practicality, okay, well, I get up and I'm like, oh, I look so old today. Okay, yeah, I am my age, but look at my beautiful life. And I and I, I meet that thought with, what, what can I be thankful for about the fact that I'm at this age in this stage of my life? Personally, I have to freaking awesome kids. I don't know how they got that way. I think <laughs> I do. Every day. And I have an amazing husband who loves me ridiculously much. And I have a beautiful life. It's all I've ever asked for. And the Lord has blessed me abundantly. And I tell myself that truth. And if that means I have some gray hair and some wrinkles because I've gotten to this point in my life, then I'm going to wear those gray hair and wrinkles proudly up in a cute style with some red lipstick and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to show the world that gray hair and I am more than that. And then the Bible also talks about how the gray hair is a crowning glory on the Aww. old. And I'm just like, yeah. And so I'll just wear my little wisdom glitter and I'll be fine with my life. <laughs> wisdom glitter. Well, it is. Um, but then in the, in the dark moments when it's, oh, you're still so fat. Oh, you, you've gone so many years and there hasn't been any change and blah, 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 blah. Think on what is true. Daily, you're making changes. Daily, you're doing the right thing. You're moving. You didn't get here with one cookie and you're not going to get out of it with one cucumber. So, oh, yeah, that's true. But I have the Lord on my side and I have so many voices 
cheering me on in my life and challenging me to not stay stuck using cookies to stuff down the dark places. I've got people pouring into my life about those dark places and the season I'm in right now. And it's hard work. And it makes me want to come home and not think about it and put a cookie in instead. But that cookie is going to solve nothing. If I put in the word of God instead, if I put in what is true, that he loves me, I'm acceptable to him, I'm worth more than a momentary Oreo. I'm worth more than that to the people in my life. I'm worth more than that to the God of the universe. So why would I say, oh, shove all that aside, I'm taking the Oreo. And then it becomes not just a cookie and not just a mindless action. It becomes, I see this in front of me and I have a willful decision to make. I see the potential for myself sinning against my body in front of my face. Am I going to go through with that? And Paul says, let's not sin just because grace abounds. That, that's not how that works. We say, this is a sin to me where I'm at in my health journey. I'm choosing to set it aside. I'm going to walk in obedience to Christ. Do we still sin? Yeah. Thankfully, I can't eat gluten, so I can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> but it's those things are what gives me the power it's literally calling that cookie what it is and thinking through that process and saying this this moment is going to help me stuff something that is part of an unhealed place that the lord still needs to work on and still needs to touch am i willing to let him have that or am i willing to stay in my prison of self-hatred and doubt when he's called me to walk in freedom because I am his child. So which one am I going to do? And is a cookie really worth that? No matter yeah. if it is gigantic, big as your head and has bits of candy bars in it, and it's ooey gooey and melty and all the fun things. You yeah. can do all of that on THM. All you have to do is watch KJ cook. <laughs> Without the right ingredients. I'm just saying. So yeah. like for me, I have to ask myself the hard stuff. I got here by... What you said, not letting myself think about those dark places. I got here with just saying, there's so much pain and misery in my past. I'm going to stuff it down with food till it never sees the light of day. But guess what happens when you stuff it down with food? It sees the light of day on my hips when I walk past everybody in my life. I'm still wearing... I'm still wearing those bad choices. I'm still wearing that girl who was ashamed of who she was in her heart. But I'm changing internally day by day from the inside out. And so I make those choices up here to do what's right by these hips now. And that is why. Every day. Very good. I love it. What about you, Cindy? How do you grab hold of those thoughts? Or do you? How do you grab hold of them and change them well i'm my personality is kind of all or nothing so uh i was all in before i met kj on facebook um i hadn't had anything off plan for like 11 months um and i was just on my own i didn't really know anybody who was doing um thm but um i just when I set my mind to do something, I just do it. And so that's how I was. And then, um, I don't know if this story is appropriate right here, but um, I went to Minnesota and visited a cousin I hadn't seen in like 40 years. And um, I, I thought, oh, you know, people are so nice, they're gonna wanna feed you. But I wanted to let her know gently that I, and I said, I'm not gonna be hungry when I come, so don't, you know, don't worry about anything, you know, fixing anything. Um, and I, I've cut back on sugar. I didn't say I wasn't eating sugar, but I said, I don't remember what I said, trying to be polite. You know, I didn't know KJ yet then. So I didn't know what I, what I could just go ahead and say. <laughs> so I get there and we visited. And it was so nice to see her. Her name is Cindy too, we, which I always got a kick out of that. I knew another Cindy in our family. Well, she says, I made you a blueberry pie. She said, I have two little blueberry bushes and they yield two pies a year. And she made one of the pies for me. <laughs> I was like, and she said, I cut back on the sugar so you could have it. You would have thought I was an anorexic who was being asked to eat 
food, you know, because I truly knew, I knew that I had not gone off plan ever in 11 months. And I struggled and I ate that pie because that was her gift to me, to share her little blueberries with me. And she made me that pie and I kind of picked around the crust and, you know, ate a lot of the blueberries. But, um, and then I went on the big group and asked about it. And of course you get all kinds of answers, but they were like, yeah, so your, your, your relationship's more important than having a piece of pie, you know, or, or it was like a gift to her. But anyway, I don't know what my point is here, but I, <laughs> I, I can stay on line. I can stay on, um, on plan pretty well on my own because I'm stubborn. I'm like, you can't, make, <laughs> you can't make me all my life. I ate what I wanted because I wanted to. It was very, it was just downright self all about myself. I wanted it. I was going to have it. And so, um, so when you have those negative thoughts come in about that, you're not worthy, do you still struggle with those at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. And what do and you do when they come in? How do you turn that around? Well, I, I recognize where they're coming from, that it's Satan, you know, and I don't see Satan in every, under every bush and behind every doorway, but um, I listened to him for far too long. And somebody said, you know, it's just as bad to think poorly of yourself as it is to think too much of yourself. You know, it's God created you. And um, Psalm 139 is my most favorite chapter in the Bible. I just, I read it every birthday, every year I read 139. And I did have it memorized. I don't have it so well anymore, but um he loves us and he created us just the way we are. And some, some versions say that he knitted us together in our mother's womb, but there's one version that says he embroidered us together in our mother's womb. And I particularly like that one. And you know why? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's such a simple verse, but when you really stop and pick it apart and really digest he knit us together in our mother's womb. He created us. We are his creation, his custom design that he made just the way we are with the feelings and the attributes and the physical struggles. He knew every struggle we would have. He knew all of that. And he still chose to create us exactly the way we are. And I used to think, what poor, poor God, what's he going to do with me? You know, I'm, the, I was a mistake. I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that so you can go, Oh no, we weren't. I believed I was a yeah. mistake. And um, when I realized I wasn't, and when I realized what I had to offer, Oh my goodness, Katie bar the door. I can't tell you how many churches and ministries I've organized since then. And um, it's just, it's been I mean, I, I dance and sing my way to do it because I love it so That's much. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you're on the other side of those struggles and, mm -hmm. you know, have found your place in Christ. That is just, it's awesome. And I'm so glad you found your place in this little community and that you're one of our shrinking sisters. We love you so much. And I'm so glad you were able to join us for a couple of podcasts. I hope it was fun. It was. So we'll be talking more about um, shame in some coming months as uh, September comes. We'll be talking specifically in my upcoming coaching group about shame and um, overcoming shame in our health journey and our body image and all of that. So definitely be on the lookout for that. It'd be something to be fun to be part of. And you get Bonnie Clap and Cindy as part of your package. <laughs> All right, my friends, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. Bye.